Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. DJI drones incorporate a safety feature called the FlySafe Geo System, intended to prevent you from inadvertently flying in risky airspace. It will either outright stop you from flying, require you to pass unlock criteria, or at least have you acknowledge the risk. This system even applies to the DJI Mavic Mini or Mini 2 drones. So let's discuss what the fly safe zones are and how to deal with them. I'll show you how to unlock your flight in advance and how to do it right on the spot. Finally, I'm going to show you what happens when you try flying in a Class F restricted zone. Somewhere you should not be flying at all, even with the DJI Mini 2. First of all, I want to emphasize something I talked about in an earlier video. The DJI FlySafe zones do not correspond to regulatory zones defined by Transport Canada. DJI's map is getting better. They've added Class F restricted zones since I did my video in 2020. But definitely, controlled airspace does not correspond to their bowtie-shaped airport restrictions. So please, don't rely upon the DJI system to inform you about Canadian airspace or proximity to airports or heliports. Before every flight, even with a sub 250 gram drone, and especially if you attempt to do a DJI unlock, please check either the NRC Drone Site Selection website or the Drone Pilot Canada app to confirm that you are legally permitted to fly in the area and to ensure you have all required authorizations. Okay, assuming you are legally permitted to do your flight, let's see what different DJI zones mean and which ones you can unlock. There are five kinds of zones you'll see on the FlySafe map and that you may encounter while flying. I'll use the area around Toronto as an example. Let's start with the red zones. These are the most restrictive and they're typically around the runways of major airports and around prisons and places like the Pickering Nuclear Power Station. These areas can only be unlocked with a custom unlock and a direct interaction with DJI and may require you to submit documentation like your advanced pilot certificate and perhaps proof of permission from the airport or institution that you're flying near. The gray zones. These are called altitude zones and are off the ends of runways. You'll be restricted to lower altitudes in these areas and again you'll need a custom unlock to fly above certain altitudes here. The blue zones. This is the area of most interest. These are called authorization zones, but in some ways that's a bit of a misnomer. You can unlock blue zones as long as you have a verified DJI account and an internet connection at the time of your flight. No documentation is required, nothing. So authorization zone, maybe not. At any rate, next is the orange zones. These are called enhanced warning zones. These are similar to the blue zones, but you don't need an internet connection at the time of your flight and you don't need a verified account. All you do is acknowledge the warning, accept responsibility, and off you go. Finally, yellow. These are pretty similar to the orange zones, but with just a warning. You just acknowledge it and move on. And again, I want to emphasize that these colors, zones, and restrictions are not the same as Transport Canada's regulations. In many cases, DJI FlySafe will not even warn you about flying in an area that is illegal or requires special authorization from Transport Canada. And even if you're flying a Mini or Mini 2, you should be aware of the potential risks. Okay, let's unlock a blue authorization zone in advance, what they call a scheduled unlock. Well, planning ahead is usually considered a good idea. I'll just forewarn you that there are a surprising number of steps required compared to just doing it on the spot when you fly, and I'll show you that next. So step one is to go to the dji.com slash flysafe webpage. Log into your DJI account and make sure that you've got all the information in there. 
Ensure that your continent and country are properly selected. There's instructions and explanations and a great map on this site, which I encourage you to check out. But if you just want to do the unlock, scroll down to unlock a zone. You'll see two options. Custom unlock is for the higher risk areas like the red restricted zones close to airports. And remember, you'll be required to submit formal documentation showing that you're permitted to fly in the particular place. Self unlock, by comparison, is fairly easy. So let's pick that. Next, scroll down to the map. In the top left, select your drone model. Now, I'm not sure what the sort order is on this list, but the Mini 2, just for example, is at the very bottom. Now, search for your location using the search bar, or if you want, you can scroll and zoom. But for Canada, they open the map somewhere in the far north. So I recommend you actually just do a search for a town or city near where you are, and that'll save you a lot of time scrolling. And by the way, if the map comes up blank, don't worry, just give it a second. Even on a super fast internet connection, it takes a while to paint. Okay, let's suppose we want to fly in the blue area here around the Arnprior Airport. First, click on the tag in the middle of the airport. Don't try clicking in the blue area itself. You have to click on the tag. If an unlock is permitted, it will say unlock available and below the map, the zone will be displayed. Next, enter your flight controller serial number. Now, this is not your aircraft serial number, and it also is not your remote control serial number. Your flight controller serial number is displayed in the DJI Fly or DJI Go 4 app when you're connected to the aircraft. Click on the three dots, go to the About section, and you'll find it there. I recommend you type it into a document on your computer if you're going to use this a lot, so you can easily cut and paste it into this little box on the screen. Next, you pick the day of your flight. Your unlock will be valid from that day until midnight two days later. Hit Submit. Now the fun begins. You'll be asked to agree to terms and conditions and declare that you do in fact have authorization to fly in the location that you've picked and that you accept full responsibility for your flight. For a self-unlock, you're not required to submit any documentation, well, other than your DJI account information and your mobile phone number and your firstborn. Other than that, you're fine. You'll be sent an authorization code by text, so be sure you have your phone handy. Enter your phone number, and by the way, here, just the numbers, no dashes. Agree to more terms and conditions and hit send. You'll soon receive a six digit code on your phone. Hit verify after you enter the code, then proceed. If all goes well, you will receive an unlock successful message indicating that your unlock license is now available in the DJI app. And by the way, you can do up to 30 of these scheduled unlocks at a time. Now, either in advance or at the time of your flight, connect up your drone, make sure your device has an internet connection, and load the license into the flight controller. You may also need an internet connection at the time of your flight, but if you've already loaded your unlocked license, you should be fine without an internet connection. So like I said, it's a bit of an ordeal to plan ahead like this, but it does work and it takes some of the risk and worry out of attempting an unlock at the time of your flight. So now let's look at the on the fly method. To demonstrate, we'll take a short road trip towards a nearby airport. So I'm near the Carp Airport just west of Ottawa and actually inside the, the uh, DJI uh, FlySafe Blue Authorization Zone. And I'm gonna try that unlock to see how it goes. So the weird thing is that when you first connect to your aircraft in an authorization zone, you get this error message. Okay, I also got a compass calibration error message, but we'll ignore that for now. The warning message says that you are unable to take off before unlocking, and it provides no clues how to unlock. And you can search all over the menus, but there is no way to unlock it from a menu. The secret is the dumbest thing ever. Just try to take off. 
Just do the down and in start motors procedure and bingo, you're on the path to unlock. Now, if you're in a blue zone, you will need an internet connection. In my case, I simply opened up a mobile hotspot on my phone because the device I fly with doesn't actually have internet. It's an easy solution. So once your motors are started, it will now offer you the unlock. Just agree to the three conditions. I am qualified to fly in this area. I agree to assume full liability for flying in this area. And I agree to upload DJI device hardware information. By agreeing to these, you are basically declaring full accountability for anything that happens during the flight and your activity will be traceable back to you by virtue of the drone identification. And by agreeing, an unlock license is immediately granted. So yeah, other than the need for an internet connection at flight time, it is dead simple to unlock on the spot. Far simpler than scheduling it in advance. So, I promised you one other thing in this video. What happens when you try to take off in a Class F restricted zone? These zones are legally no-fly zones for drones of all sizes, including the DJI Mavic Mini and Mini 2. So I'm going to jump back in the car and drive to the dreaded CYR-531 Cannot Gunnery Zone, which isn't too far away. The weird thing about this particular no-fly zone is that it overlaps with a quiet residential area and a lovely park. And here we are. So I, here I am in the ultra dangerous class F restricted zone CYR531. And as you can see, there's uh, a lot of dangerous activity going on around here, like uh, tobogganing and people having a, uh, a lot of fun in the winter which is great. Um, but being a class F restricted zone, this little corner here is actually uh, prohibited for drone flying of all sizes, even sub 250 gram drones. And up until recently, the DJI FlySafe map did not actually register as a uh, restricted zone. So let's check it out. I'll set up now and see if the DJI FlySafe map actually restricts me from flying. I'm not actually going to fly because that's illegal, but I'll actually start up the drone just to see. Well, my camera battery decided to die from the cold, but it's a pretty short story, so not to worry. Once I started the motors on my Mini 2, I had this warning pop up. Aircraft in enhanced warning zone, fly with caution. And it named CYR-531, and it did not say it was a no-fly zone for drones. All I had to do was tap a tick box saying I was assuming full liability for flying in the area and I was allowed to take off. And that doesn't make sense. Class F restricted areas should be at least DJI blue authorization zones, in my opinion anyways. So there we have it, the various restricted zones according to the DJI fly safe system, what they mean and how to unlock the ones that require unlocking. And again, I urge you, please check the NRC drone site selection tool or Drone Pilot Canada app to ensure you properly understand your flight's airspace and proximity to airports and heliports. The DJI fly safe system, while good in some ways, does not match our legal requirements in Canada. I hope you found this video helpful. Drop me a comment down below, give me a thumbs up, and please subscribe to my channel if you don't already do so. Ring that bell for notification of future videos. Thanks again for watching.